As the global economy moves forward it is difficult to ignore that it is constructed on a weak foundation of imbalances, lies, and excesses. This is why we should expect the economic end game resulting from decades of failed policies to be very ugly. Sooner or later all great Ponzi schemes must come to an end. When the markets finally succumb to the fact that current economic policies have failed all will collapse, and the end game will have arrived. Following the financial Armageddon and I do mean following, as by several months, central banks will be forced to unleash such a massive amount of new currency into the system to combat a scourge of deflation that it will stagger the mind. This will in effect clear the deck of deadwood through hyperinflation and pave the way forward to introduce a new or a batch of new currencies. Call it a realignment if you wish, but in reality, it will be the recognition that our path was an unsustainable illusion and that a new start will be deemed the best path out of the legal morass that contagion and collapse has rendered. The debts that are not written off will become a moot point in that most will be devalued and paid off in worthless paper. The issue will not be what is fair, but how to get from here to there with the least damage to the institutions and wealth those in power seek to protect. We must recognize that we are but pawns in the giant game known as the global economy. Please excuse the tone of this video, it is rooted in the idea that on occasion it is good to vent or say what is on our mind. Sometimes we have to simply concede things are what they are and find solace in the thought that things could be far worse. You can expect promises to be rewritten and broken. Rules will change as we go through the wash. Most people will see their assets rinsed away as society is put through the ringer. For example, Expect the cost of living adjustment on social security to be modified reducing payments to the elderly. Adding to the woes of retirees is that many pensions will be forced to reduce payouts and break promises as the returns on their investment fail to meet expectations. Many of the guarantees and paper promises granted over the past decades will prove to be less valuable than the paper they are printed on. In 1929, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates several times in an attempt to cool the overheated economy and stock market, just as it did last year. By October, a powerful bear market had commenced, just as it did last year. On Thursday, October 24, 1929, a spate of panic selling occurred as investors began to realize that the stock boom was actually an over-inflated speculative bubble. Margin investors were being decimated as large numbers of stock investors tried to liquidate their shares to no avail. Millionaire margin investors went bankrupt almost instantly when the stock market crashed on October 28 and 29. To make matters worse, many banks had invested their deposits in the stock market, just as they did in the crash that caused the Great Recession, causing these banks to lose their depositors' savings as stocks plunged. Bank runs soon occurred when bank patrons tried to withdraw their savings from banks all at the same time. Major banks and brokerage firms became insolvent, adding more fuel to the stock market crash. The financial system was in shambles. The sad state of the economy is the result of failed economic policies designed to enrich the wealthy elite while impoverishing the masses. The government-orchestrated 9-11 fraud hoisted on the American people has enabled hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars annually to be funneled into the military-industrial complex and has not only wrought havoc and misery on the countries invaded but on the American economy, as well as the empire seeks to establish total hegemony over resource-rich weaker nations. It is much easier for government to deceive people in a democracy where people assume everything is above board than in a dictatorship where they know it is not. The only valid solution to mankind's suffering is the removal of all human governments. A difference between the Great Depression and today is that the Great Depression came on relatively suddenly. Everyone noticed the difference, and our rulers were caught off guard. So it became etched into our national consciousness. The American economy died in 2000, due to the absurd bubble blown by Greenspan. This time our rulers were ready and implemented historically lower interest rates, a flood of cheap labor, QE and other financial ledger domain, trillions of dollars deficits, endless war, trillions of dollars bank bailouts, phony financial statistics, stock purchases by central banks, and other coordinated actions by central banks. The slide was stretched over 20 years and the facts were managed. So perception of what was happening was obscured. Try to imagine what life would be like in 2020, if the painful, but proper medicine had been administered in 2000. We would have a painful memory, but we would be in a far better place now. But our rulers knew better. 
Great Depression 2.0 doesn't do justice to what is about to hit not just the US, but the entire world. Global reset might be a better way of describing it because once the sheet hits the fan this time, there is not telling what will emerge from the smoking crater that used to be the global economy. Back in Great Depression I, people were still mostly farmers with skills that had been passed through the generations. Today, most Americans and others in advanced economies are totally disconnected from the land and the skills that sustained humanity throughout most of history. There are many other reasons why this time it is going to be exponentially worse than last time. Better be ready, it is coming on fast and hard and will blindside the vast majority of the clueless masses. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. The alternate inflation charts in shadow stats show inflation rising like a cobra about to strike. Only before the 2008 stock market and financial crash has inflation shown as spiking as high. I predict that the Bankster's Federal Reserve is losing control of our manipulated economy as inflation spikes when the government cannot afford to pay the rise in interest payments on its debt. Ignoring its unmentionable liabilities, federal fiscal shortfall surges past $100 trillion daily. The Fed goose that lays golden eggs for its banksters may finally be about to get cooked. Let us set the pot to hyper scalding for it. I will not mind if its meat becomes blackened. I am warming my pitchfork to get in my own little piece of the bankster's golden goose. May they also suffer the same fate as Americans finally act with righteous anger. Personally, I would be satisfied with just fixing them all, as my dog got fixed. I bet that stealing would not be as appealing if they were like Ken dolls. We should definitely try that out soon. The Fed can be saved by just forcing it to make the banksters give it bonds convertible to 99.99999% ownership of their entities in exchange for Federal Reserve bailouts, then converting those bonds to controlling shares. The banksters are like toddlers constantly asking for diaper changes. Thus bailout by bailout, soon the Fed will finally cease being owned by the banksters and will soon own all of what were formerly the banksters' banks and Wall Street entities. It will then be truly independent. We have to choose between having a Fed that is government owned by independent or one owned and controlled by gangs of actual criminals. Now, in contrast, the Fed has only begun talking about reducing its massive purchases of treasury and agency mortgage-backed securities. That would be preparation for the initial liftoff of the Fed's key federal funds target rate, currently in a rock-bottom 0% to 0.25% range, in 2022 at the earliest and maybe not until 2023. We've got a White House bent on borrowing and spending. With income, wealth inequality being as dramatic as it currently is, funneling large quantities of money into the bottom and middle parts of the economy, as opposed to the Fed's funneling it into the top, is likely a very good thing. The problem is it isn't getting paid for. I.e. if the money got taken from the rich and reinserted at the bottom end of the economy through the spending programs that Biden has proposed such as stimulus, and paying for health care, childcare, infrastructure and education, that would be a good thing. But with Congress preventing that second component and instead just paying for it through borrowed, printed money it might well end up in a disaster. Only the Fed is buying the 10-year, unreal and wrong. This is the repo market. The Fed is shoving these bonds down banks' throats, running away with the cash and giving it to their homeboys to buy Chipotle stock. Hence no money to lend. Wells Fargo is the tip of the iceberg. We are getting close to the big kerplunk. The inflation is going to 5%, so let's invest in something that gives 1.3% return with a guaranteed loss of 3%. Who are these brilliant investors? The brilliant folks at the Fed of course. The Federal Reserve is keeping interest rates at artificially low rates through their monthly purchases, 80 billion of treasuries and 40 billion of mortgage-backed securities. If and when the Fed starts to gradually reduce their monthly purchases, then there should be an increase in interest rates. The Fed knows that they are responsible the surge in equities and real estate. The Fed also know that equities and real estate will crash without their continued intervention. How long will this intervention go on? Your guess is as good as mine. Inflation is absolutely out of control. The pressure building on rates is going to blow the Fed's lid off the pressure cooker eventually. Housing the number one expense, is up about 50% in the last year or so based on pending offers I'm seeing now. 
it takes time for the data to flow through the system. Once it does, even the Fed will have to address it with higher rates. The Fed's mandate has changed forever. They have painted themselves into a corner since 2009 and have no way of exiting it without a complete economic disaster. Their only mandate now is to provide support so stock markets can have massive annual returns. Period. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.